Hi everybody, welcome back. It is Mr. Poser, your AP Biology teacher. Today we are continuing based on our last one on graphs. Um, we're studying Science Practice 4 a little bit for the AP Biology exam. Um, and this is kind of an extension video on like graphs and representing data here because there's going to be some stuff that you're going to see um, statistics wise that are going to be on the AP exam and they're just you know not limited to biology. This is just you know good to know as far as uh, statistics and data um, understanding data is a huge deal for uh, today's modern world. So, so I hope this is uh, helpful for a number of reasons. Um, but today we're going to be looking at these uh, these numbers over here. All right. So this is where I left you uh, with last video. All right. You're doing your AP exam. You come across a question and you got to make a graph here based on a data table. And then you have these numbers over here. What do they mean and why are they significant? And you'll see why that's funny in just a second. All right, um, but check it out. We have this uh, plus or minus symbol all the way down here on our data points, and then we have capital S, capital E, and then this little X that with a bar on top of it. So what does that exactly mean, and what are these numbers um, indicating over here? All right, well, these numbers are what we call standard error of the mean, and it's a measure that indicates how much the sample differs from the mean or how confident you are in your mean value representing your data points. All right, and that might not mean a whole lot right now, um, but when we run through an example and we're just going to calculate this on our own in a little bit, it'll start to make a lot more sense. So basically, the larger the uh, standard error of the mean value that you have for a data point, the less confidence you have in the mean actually representing the average. All right, so say for example, um, I am trying to collect the average shoe size of everybody in my AP biology class, right? Let's say we we're, we're have average shoe size, but I only have four kids in my class um, and two of them have size 14 and then the other two have size six okay and then I average those and I get an average of about like I think that would be eight no that wouldn't be eight that would be like ten right so ten is a very average shoe size but does anybody have that shoe size in my class no right so I would have a very very large standard error of the mean how well does the mean actually you know how different are the values actually representing the mean that's what standard error is okay um, so the larger the number, as I said, the larger the number, the greater the standard error of the mean and the less confidence we have in the mean actually representing um, the, that data point or that, uh, that group or that sample, right? So check it out. This plus or minus means here indicates a range, all right? So the number of flies, the average number of flies with the ebony body and long wings is 98, but... There's a standard error of the mean about 10 above and below 98. So most of your flies that you're going to find are going to be um, in 108, or it's going to be 108 and 88, all right? Because that's 10 above 98 and 10 below 98. So it's kind of representing a range. All right, and we're going to walk through how to do that in just a second. But first, in order to find standard error of the mean over here, we have to find standard deviation. And what that is, is the value that shows how much variation there is from the average for a set of data points. Okay, um, so here's, uh, here's our standard deviation equation. And you will be given this on the AP exam. I'm not sure if you're going to actually have to calculate it. I'm going to say probably not. Um, but just to, this is good to know where it comes from um, for a lot of, uh, well, not just for AP Biology, for every other class, right? Or for any other class that involves data collection, so any other science class, right? So here's standard deviation, um, and it looks like a big scary formula here, but it's not that bad, all right? And then standard error of the mean is just S, standard deviation, divided by the square root of N, um, and that's pretty much it, all right? So uh, we're going to be walking through an example here, because um, that is going to give us the clearest indication of how this all works, all right? So check it out. Um, I have uh, birds on islands, right? So it says the number of birds on each island in an island chain are as follows. There's 96 on one, 88 in, on another, 86, 84, 80, and 70. All right, and we're going to calculate the standard deviation of this data set, all right? So uh, how much does the average, um, or excuse me, how much do these values vary from the average? And in order to find that, we have to find out what the average is, all right? An X bar, I haven't figured out how to make an X with a little bar on top of it in my uh, program here, so I wrote X bar there. Um, that is representing what we call our mean or our average, right? And we've been doing this since grade school, like 
add them all up divided by the number of, the number of terms, right? So uh, what I did here is that we added up 96, 88, 86, 84, 80, and 70, and divided by 6 because that's how many islands there are, and we get our average as being 84. Yes, we're doing good, okay? So x bar is equal to 84. That is step one of uh, calculating standard deviation. Step two is determine the deviation from the mean of each value and then add them all up, okay? So how much do our values um, vary or differ from 84, all right? And there's a mathematical way to do this. We have X is representing each one of our values, okay? And the X bar is representing our mean. So for example, well, I did all of them already. Um, we'll check it out. We have um, our first island at 96, all right? So we have calculate 96 minus 84 squared, okay? We go 88 minus 84 squared, okay? Because that's our next value. Basically, we're calculating the difference in our values from the mean and squaring them, all right? Um, so if we do that, I encourage you to try and do this on your calculator yourself, okay? 84 is our average, um, and these are each of our values, and if you put them in your calculator, okay, we get these, all right? Because, you know, think about it. 96 minus 84 is 12. Square that, it's 144. Um, we add all these numbers up and we get 376, okay? So again, I'm encouraging you to kind of follow along with me here um, as we uh, calculate standard deviation, all right? Um, so basically, again, what we did, do you see the sigma here? The sigma symbol means add them all up. It means sum or summation, that's what it is, okay? Um, and all I'm doing, once again, here's each of my values is representing x minus x bar, uh, which is the average, and square that, and you add them all up, and this is what we get for our data point, all right, or for our data set, 376. Step three of this is calculate the degrees of freedom, and this part is super easy. All degrees of freedom is is basically how many uh, how many data points do you have minus one, all right? So uh, basically, we have six different islands, which means our data point is, or our degrees of freedom is five, just because it's six minus one, easy, right? So n, this number here, is uh, representing how many data points that we have, and we have six of them. All right, so six minus one is five. All right, and then, well, um, next step is put together, to put it all together to find s. All right, this uh, top value we already calculated as being 376. This bottom value is five, and then we take the square root of that. I encourage you to punch that into your calculator right now if you haven't already. And check it out, 375, or 6 divided by 5 is 75.2. If you take the square root of that, we get a value of 8.67. That is representing our standard deviation. How much does our, um, how, do our data points differ, or how much do they vary from our average, okay? So uh, in order to find standard error of the mean, which is what we're going to be graphing here in a second, you divide your standard deviation by the square root of n, or number of your values. And this is, this is the easy part, right? So we, uh, or n, easy part. We already calculated standard deviation, 8.67, divided by the square root of 6, and we get 3.54. Um, and two standard deviations, or excuse me, two standard error of the mean, um, like what we see, saw in that data table, okay, is just two times this, uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. All right, so two standard error of the means for us for this data point would be uh, 7.08, okay? Um, so this number right here, what this is our golden ticket here, this number indicates the size of the error bars on a graph, okay? Error bars, that's what this is all about, all right? We talked about error bars a little bit um, in a previous video, okay? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head which one it is, okay? But it's in this playlist, I promise you. Um, but error bars represent, okay, how much does that value uh, vary, okay? And this is uh, my interpretation of this, uh, this, this is my graph here that I made. All right, so if I'm um, calculating or if I'm uh, measuring average population size, I'm counting up by tens, I've got my label here. Um, and here's my bar representing my mean, 84, all right? But this little eye shape over here, these are error bars, all right? And that means... From this value, I'm going about seven above the mean, and I'm going about seven below the mean. And this is how much variability um, there is in my average, my data point that I collected here. All right, so that would be the size of my error bar. And you will be expected to put error bars on your bar graphs and perhaps even on your line graphs as well. And that's what they look like. 
you got to know the stand two times the standard error of the mean. It's usually going to uh, tell you for you. All right, and you put your error bars just like that. Okay, or the top reach, the top uh, horizontal section here um, is representing um, your average plus. Okay, two standard error of the means, and then the bottom is two below, or excuse me, two standard error of the means below your mean. Okay, um, so here's the uh, here's the data table from before. We're gonna graph this now. Okay, where uh, I brought this back from the beginning of the video. We got 98 plus or minus 10 ebony body long wing flies, 28 plus or minus 7, so on and so forth. I'd like you to try and graph this on your own. I'm gonna show you mine in just a second. Um, pause if you want to try it yourself, but if not, I'm going to go ahead and move on. This is, oh, hang on. There we go. This is my graph. All right, here it is. I got the number of flies. Over here, I counted up by 20s as my scale. Remember, scaling in units is still important. You know, we're, we're still talking about graphs. There's my uh, data table. Here's my labels down here. And most importantly, check it out. Here are my error bars. All right, so ebony body long wings are uh, standard error of the mean, or two times standard error of the mean was 10. All right, so I went 10 below the mean and 10 above the mean to represent that error bar. Um, I, I think this one was 25, so I went 25 above and 25 below. All right, and uh, yeah, this is this is how you do it. All right, and if this were a line graph, you'd do the same thing, except for a data point, you'd put some uh, um, error bars on each one of those points, okay? Um, and why, as I put over here, why bother to put error bars? Why does error bars matter? Okay, overlapping error bars indicates that there is no statistically significant difference between groups of variables. Okay, and this is going back to testing independent versus dependent variable, accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis or the uh, alternative hypothesis. All right, so if this were my data here, or if these were my data here, and check out these gigantic error bars, um, these are overlapping. Okay, that means that the standard error of the mean is large enough that I cannot actually say statistically that there is a difference in the values between these three, um, these three data points. There's no difference between um, calcium sensitivity in phosphate, oxalate, or uric acid. Okay, so this would be a scenario where I accept the null hypothesis because these error bars are so big, and check it out, they're overlapping one another. All right, so check it out. Here's this gigantic range for uric acid. Okay, if the other ranges of these other uh, error bars fall into that, okay, you don't have statistically significant data. There, the independent variable does not affect the dependent variable. Um, so that means the matrix does not affect calcium sensitivity there. Okay, um, so check it out. On our graph here, is the data statistically significant? Do our error bars overlap? Well, yes, it is statistically significant. There's no overlap in the error bars, maybe uh, maybe a little bit between ebony body long wings and gray body but vestigial data, excuse me, vestigial wings, um, but the rest of these do not uh, overlap at all, okay? and we can indicate that, yes, the dependent variable is affected by the independent variable. The uh, There is a significant difference in the number of flies of each phenotype um, over here, so there's something going on genetically. Um, if you want to know what that this is all about, I believe this is topic 5.6 um, in my other videos. All right, um, but that will be it for today. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.